What's up, everybody? Welcome back. John Levesque here, Senior Platform Evangelist for the Power Platform. And wow, it has been a while since we've done a video just us, hasn't it? I feel like I've, for months and months and months on end, I've had guests, I've had community, community members and MVPs, been trying to share the stage and give people an opportunity to be known and show their stuff. But today, we're back to just you and me. And what are we talking about? We are going to show you the brand new Microsoft Lists. If you're not familiar with Lists, get ready. You're in for a crash course. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to discuss our use case. Why are we going to use a Microsoft list? What are we going to do with it? What's its purpose? And so right here in front of me, I have this email and you can see it says how to use flow properties to get the word out. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that right here. How to use flow properties to get the word out. Now, this is a email that I used to have to send to people probably three to 10 times a month. And, you know, I could have a Word document ready where this was ready to go and copy and paste it, or I could save it as an EML file and attach it and send it to people. But I decided, you know what, I wanted it to feel a little bit more personal. An automation that feels personal. Yeah, that's a good goal, right? So anyways, what did I do? I went ahead and I put together a guide telling people who are looking to build Power Automate connectors how to use our various community properties to go ahead and extend their reach, to get in front of more of your eyes, right? They want to know, okay, I built this connector. How do I get people to use it? And in my realm, this is what I told them. I said, the first thing you should do is you should make templates. Templates are going to make it easy for other people to use your connector. I then tell them to go get registered in the community and start writing on the community blog. Do a how-to. Do a welcome. Introduce people to your service. Anyways, I go on here to tell them additional steps on how they can gain access to some of our properties. And if they continue to be a good steward and interact with our community, I give them access to the big blog, which is awesome because it has over 100,000 monthly viewers. It's a big bonus for people. So anyways, this is something that I would have to do all the time because the connector team would send people to me. I would then send this email out all the time. And so instead of that, I created a new business process. I said, I'm gonna power automate this. I'm gonna build some flows. I'm gonna make this work for me instead of me working for it. So let's go ahead and jump in and look at what this process looks like. So the first thing is, instead of the, the connector team sending someone to me, they go ahead and send them here to the Microsoft Flow Community Outreach Request Form. It's four fields. Company name, first name, last name, email address. That's it. So when you fill out those four things after you build your connector, you then will get this email automatically. Pretty cool, right? So now that just takes out a whole bunch of work that I have to do. But even cooler than that, I've built in a little bit of a delay here so that after 15 days, I follow up and I say, hey, how's it going? Do you need anything additional? Are you working the properties out yourself? I'll show you that a little bit in the flow, but let's go ahead and jump into how this all comes together. So first thing we want to look at here is Microsoft Lists. Uh, this should be rolled out for everyone by now. I'm, I'm hearing that everybody should be having this, and if you don't, uh, it should be coming shortly to your tenant, so rest assured it will be there soon. But it's pretty simple. You can do a couple of things here, right? There's a couple lists that I have, uh, you know, and you can see here my partner onboarding list. We're going to look at that in a second. But let's just go ahead and take a look at what the new list experience looks like real quick so that you can see what it's like for you to build one. So you got a couple options here. You can actually build one from blank. You can build one from an Excel file. Or you can go ahead and choose one of these nifty templates that they have. This is a cool one, Content Scheduler. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty funny. I was in a meeting the other day and people were talking about, oh, how do we want to run our editorial calendar? Well, here you go. SharePoint, uh, Microsoft Lists. They have a Content Scheduler list template ready to go for you. Let's actually just go ahead and click into that one real quick and check it out. 
So it looks like it's gonna provide some default columns here. Content title, description, author, status, draft due date, published by, content type, images, links, and then files. Pretty cool. Let's just go ahead and use it and see what it does. So content scheduler, what's it about? Uh, let's say John videos, we'll choose an icon. A calendar is good, we'll save it to my list. Awesome, we'll hit create. Let's see what happens. Wow, look at that. What a nifty thing. So it just went ahead and made that whole list for me. Okay, pretty, pretty cool. And now if I wanted to go ahead and add to that, I would just simply come over here to this right side and click on add column and then I could go ahead and add additional things. So I could go ahead and put another single line of text here that says published. Right, and then boom, we see another column get added. Okay, simple as that. So now, now that we know how simple it is to make a list, let's go ahead and just check out my list that I've created to manage this partner onboarding process. So, first thing you're gonna notice is there are four contact fields here, okay? And company title, contact email, first name, last name. Those are the four fields that I asked for in the form, right? Over here in the form, company name, first name, last name, email. Company name, email, first name, last name. Boom. Okay. Now, I also have something else. The date they are added. The date that they're added to the list gets put here. And then there's also this follow-up date. But if you notice, there's no date columns here inside of my form. And so those have to get added somewhere, right? So now... Now that we see all of our columns here, and these are just all text, by the way, uh, company title, contact email, first name, last name, all single line of text, date added and follow up date, also single line of text. Now, why did I use single line of text instead of date fields or email fields? I'm gonna be honest, it's because Power Automate likes to use strings. It passes strings very easily. It can interpret those numbers without you saying this is a date. If you just pass it as a string, it's actually gonna save you a lot of heartache in the long run. Instead of having to set up additional steps, you just pass that string value and it's going to work. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump in here. This solution takes two flows to do. You could do it in one. Uh, I like to do it in two. I like to break up my flows into compartmentalized pieces. So that way I can manage each part of the process much more easily and efficiently rather than having a whole lot of dependencies down line that I have to, you know, uh, manage every time I make a change. And so this way, if I compartmentalize my flow into separate pieces, if I need to make a change to the first piece, easy. And if I need to make a change to the second piece, easy. So flow number one, what does it do? It starts with the trigger when a new response is submitted. This trigger gives you one option. You have one dropdown and you can choose the name of one of your forms. This one is called the Microsoft Flow Community Outreach Request Form. We saw that here. Your title in the top, it's going to basically match what you're searching inside of your flow here. Now, I then go ahead and click this little plus sign and add an action. That action is get response details. Now, when I do that, when I choose that step, get response details, what's gonna happen is this apply to each is going to appear. It's gonna drop this get response details down inside of it, and it's going to move this list of responses into your output value here for your apply to each. So basically what it's doing is it's saying get all of the details for each response. So we go ahead and say when a response is submitted, get all the details for each response. And then from there, we then choose the plus, add an action. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it here. And we type in create item, okay? And then we'll see right here, create item SharePoint. Now, is that a little bit confusing? A little bit, right? Because this is called Microsoft Lists. And then over here, we're looking at SharePoint. Well, SharePoint is what's behind Microsoft Lists. Before it was Microsoft Lists, it was a SharePoint list. 
And so right now, the way we interact with the Microsoft list is the same way that we would interact with a SharePoint list. And so we choose create item, we choose create item SharePoint right here. And then that's going to go ahead and give us our same fields we have here where we choose our site address, we choose the name of the list, right? So here's our site address, here's our list name. And then what we can start to do is we can actually go ahead and start dropping items in here. So this is all the dynamic content, and that's what this stuff is called. And so we'll add that by going ahead and putting your company name right there, right? And then this one is contact email. So when we click inside of there, it's your email address, and then first name, your first name, last name, your last name. Okay, and you'll notice date added and follow up date, those still stay blank right now. We're gonna take care of that in the next flow, okay? And so we're done with this flow. This one is ready to save and then ready to go, okay? So what's gonna happen is a response gets submitted to the form. We go ahead and get all the details. What's their name? What's their company? What's their email? We then take all that information. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because we don't need that anymore. I then go ahead and take all that information and create a SharePoint list item with that info. So now the flow takes the information from the form and puts it into the SharePoint list, okay? So let's go ahead and actually just look at that in action here. And so uh, let me click on preview and then John two, so we can see the, a fresh one here because I've tested this before, Levesque two. Oh, wait a second, uh, JL Media and then John two, Levesque to email address j o l e v e s q at microsoft.com and we submit and i want to send personal data okay now let's go ahead over to our list and we can refresh and go all the way to the bottom and check it out j l media my email address john to levec to perfect that's exactly what we wanted to happen. Our flow is working. It's taking data from the form. It's moving it to the list. Step one, complete. Okay, now this is where the cool stuff happens in flow number two. So in flow number two, we have a new trigger. That trigger is when an item is created. Where? In SharePoint. Why? Because SharePoint list is what is underneath Microsoft list. So when an item is created in SharePoint, that's our trigger. So you can see here, we go ahead and connect to that same site, that same list, right? If we come over here to our first flow, same site, same list where we're dropping the info. Now, when info gets added there, right? So now our first flow is gonna trigger our second flow because we're adding info. Now we're gonna do some fun stuff. The first thing we do is, we do plus, add an action. We add this action called compose. Compose is kind of like a, a blank slate. You can put anything you want in there. And what I've done is I put this little expression, UTC now, open quotes, close quotes. What this does is just grabs your current time in the UTC time format. And that's important to know because Power Automate only operates in the UTC time format. And so if you're trying to translate between your time and it, you're probably gonna have a bad time. You always wanna make sure that you're converting time to your to, to UTC and then operating in that, or converting to your time and only operating in that. Trying to operate in both is just gonna cause you heartache, okay? So now what do I do with the current time? I convert UTC time to my time. And so I want the short date pattern, I want to go from UTC to PST, where I am, okay? And so I take the output of the Compose as my base time, because remember I grabbed UTC now. So I take that output and drop it here, and, and it's very simple to do. All you have to do here is click into that field and click Outputs, right? Because you see Compose right here. So we want the outputs of the Compose as our base time. We then choose, we, can, we have a drop down here to choose things, short date pattern from UTC to PST, okay? First time thing done. Next part, we're now going to create a 15 day counter. Because remember I talked about how after you 
you get the first email, it's going to wait 15 days and then follow up. This is how we're going to do that. So again, we drop into compose and now we're going to build a slight, small, tiny little expression here. Okay. And what it is, is we do add days, open bracket, body, open bracket, single quote, convert time zone, right? From our action here, single quote, close bracket, comma, 15, close bracket. So basically what we're saying is add 15 days to what the time we just converted. Okay, so whatever our output is of this, then now add 15 days to that. Okay, and so now we have that 15 day counter right here in our compose just kind of chilling. And so we'll leave that there for a second. And then we're going to do two things. We are going to update that SharePoint list item. Okay, we're going to drop in converted time. And then we're also going to drop in the follow up date 15 days ahead. And so again, these are very easy to do, right? When we want day added, we come down here, we click converted time because we grabbed right now and we converted it to our time. And so that's the converted time value. And then our follow up date is our converted time plus 15 days. And so then we grab our 15 day counter output and boom. Now notice this says compose, this says 15 day counter. I did that on purpose because this would have said compose too. Now, if you want to know how to rename an action and you don't know how, you just click the little ellipses and you click rename. Okay. And so that one's 15 day counter. And then we can actually just go ahead and rename this one too to current time. Okay. And so now that step is called current time. Now, here's the coolest parts. So after we do all those updates, we first send out the email. Okay. And so by now, if we go back to my email, I probably should have gotten a nice email that says how to use the flow properties. There it is. Hey there, John too. Really glad to have JL media as part of the platform. <laughs> and then I start talking to myself as myself with all the links. Okay. And so in the flow, you can see I have line breaks. I have link things. It's all nice formatted HTML because the send an email action consumes all that HTML very nicely. And so it's not a problem. Now on the other side, the last thing I want to show you here is there is an action. So in my, I, oh, I'm sorry. Let me show you one more. Um, you see here, there's a split. This is called a parallel branch and these are very easy to create. To do this, all you do is click on the plus sign in between steps or after steps and choose add a parallel branch. And that will split your flow into these two runs that then give you concurrent actions. And so right away, the first thing I want to do is send that email to myself, which already happened. And so you can see that there. And then the next thing I want to do is delay until 15 days from when the form was filled out to the minute, right? Remember we added 15 days to the moment that they got added to the list. So wait 15 days and send another email. And so this one says, hi again, name. I'm writing really quickly to check in and see how your progress is going while using our various flow properties. Have you run into any snags, any ideas on how we can improve this process to add more value? Thanks again for building on the flow platform. And so this is just a nice personal touch, right? This process used to be something that I used to have to manage very manually. I would have to write the initial email. I would have to mark in the calendar when I needed to follow up. I would then have to write a follow up email and deal with all that communication back and forth. Now, half that process is automated with two flows and what maybe about 20 minutes together. You too now can build a simple process like this, build a Microsoft list, store some data there, build yourself some columns that help you manage things, and then build some flows inside of Power Automate that help you simplify this process and, and save yourself some time. You know why? Because you should be focusing on higher, higher value work. Okay. That's it from me for today. My friends, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. If you'd like to see any new videos or any specific topics upcoming, go ahead and leave me a comment with what those are. Otherwise go ahead and click like click subscribe because you don't want to miss another video. All right, guys. Much love from me. I'll see you in the next one.